We're excited to have Caleb Hicks, founder and CEO of School AI. Caleb, could you give a brief overview of School AI and a little bit of an intro? I was a classroom teacher for a number of years, taught technology, computer science, teen entrepreneurship. We ran a school store, coached basketball, all that stuff. Love the classroom, love working with students. Went from there, I ran a small instructional design team at Apple for a couple of years, and then co-founded a completely online school where a lot of what we're building at School AI today is informed by how we worked with students. Can you give a little bit of background on what was it that made you decide to begin School AI? The thing that most people don't realize about teaching at a middle school is that you might have 30, 32, 35 desks in your classroom. I actually had 42 desks in my classroom and I taught eight periods a day. So do the math. I had more than 300 students coming in and out of my door every single day. The hardest part about that is that you know the most engaged 20 students, you know kind of the most challenging 20 students, but that middle 80% are basically anonymous and they come into school they come into your classroom, you know their names, you know their faces, you know where they sit, and that's about it. And that's not because I was a bad teacher, it was just like 300 plus people. You can't even know that many people. The reason why we get into teaching, the reason why we love working with students is when you have those light bulb moments where you sat down, you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation, and you saw something change for that kid. It may be that they got some hard concept. It may be that they worked through how to deal with a challenge that they're working on personally. Whatever it is, like that moment, that light bulb moment is what matters. The reason why teachers burn out, there's lots of reasons, but one of the hardest things about teaching is all the busy work, but it's really like there aren't enough of those light bulb moments. When I think about what AI can do in the classroom, yes, we should put AI to work to save teachers time. Yes, we should put AI to work to like remove busy work. But when I get the most excited is when you can put AI to work to help teachers better see what students need them today. Of those middle 80% of kids that you would not have had the time to go and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them, say, this is the one that needs you today. That's why we started School AI. Which students benefit the most from School AI? And there's kind of three promises of AI in working with students on a personal level. There's the obvious one where a student says something to a chatbot and the chatbot responds to the student. That might be a kid asking an AI version of Amelia Earhart her favorite cheese. I've seen that, right? It might be you have a specific question about how to do a specific type of math problem and you ask and you get a response. So it's like the level one version of AI personalizing to what a student is interested in. Level two is when you start taking what the teacher is trying to cover on a given day or what you as a student are trying to learn on a given day, and it can adapt to your interests that you've expressed previously. Imagine you're learning about supply and demand and you're interested in Marvel superheroes. The scenario that would be generated for you is you would be running a comic book stand. You'd be buying and you'd be selling and you'd be figuring out prices, but you'd be doing it in a context of something you care about. But if you're interested in fashion, then it might be a, a sneaker drop and you're trying to figure out which store to go to in New York City, right? Both of those you're teaching supply and demand, but very much in a way that you as a student care about. So that's level two. Level three is when you start getting everyone involved. You start thinking about AI as a tool to understand how you are doing and feeling and why, doing academically, how you're feeling about like the experience and, and what you learned and are you confident in it or are you not? Or are you struggling with people in your class? Or like, you can start gathering that type of understanding and you can share the right insights with the right people in your life, the teacher, your parents, school leaders, making sure that they are able to personalize what school even is for you better over time. And that's, I think, the most interesting long-term application. Everyone's going to have a personal AI tutor. That's just going to happen. It's going to eventually adapt to your interests. Lots of people are working on that. We are. We think ours is great. The real unlock is, I think, when we start seeing like school transformation, classroom transformation based on how every student is doing and feeling and why.
All right, Caleb, so you founded School AI to create more light bulb moments among students. Talk to me about the light bulb moments that exist with educators and administrators. When you think back to a time that school was awesome, like actually pause and think about that. What were the ingredients of that moment? Yeah, my teacher knew me, the content was engaging. It felt like I, had, I, I was there for a reason. When I ask that question to a room of people, undoubtedly it is going to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a teacher. It is usually going to be an after-school club or a coach or homeroom. There was time for a teacher to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you. I'll go back to when I was a teacher, my light bulb moments, the times that I remember the most, they were the 10 minutes before class started or the 15 minutes after class ended where I was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a student and I got to learn like, how did they experience my class today? What did they like? What did they not like? What worked? What didn't work? What was interesting? What got them excited to go and do something after the fact? I got to ask them and hear that and feel that, and I got to respond to it. Sometimes that was about my class. Maybe the more interesting and powerful times were when it was something that was going on with them. Hey, Mr. Hicks, I'm really struggling with this one kid in class that just seems to have it out for me. There's no secret sauce. There's no magic answer to help that kid exactly in the moment, make that problem go away. But when you can talk to them and help them think through it and they do something about it the next day and they come back and they say, Mr. Hicks, I figured it out. Like that, I figured it out moment is, is what you're going for. One of the most interesting things that I've ever done in my career was I had a dashboard, red, yellow, green. Every single student, there were 3,500 students at the school, and I could go and look at this dashboard that was live updating every single hour, red, yellow, green, how every student was doing and feeling and why. And that was informed by a couple of things. The first one is we were able to run tests against their projects. This was a coding program, and so we were able to every hour go and say, hey, how is this student doing on this project because of how the test ran? The second thing we were able to do was every hour we would give every student six emojis. They'd pick one and they would tell us why. And we were able to associate that emoji with like, what teacher were they with? What project were they working on? What time of day was it? What group were they working with? Who was their teaching assistant? We were able to take all of those and say like, hey, common problem here, this curriculum, it needs to be replaced. Common great thing here, this teacher, this teacher, clearly knows how to connect with students on this specific topic. And when you have that granularity of information, it's super powerful. The third thing that we did was a one-on-one -on -one with every student. All three of those data points would come together to this live dashboard, red, yellow, green, every student how they were doing, how they were feeling, and why. And what that meant is my school operations, my student success team could go and say, hey, these are the four students that need help right now. And they could swoop in and go, go and take care of that, right? It was, it was a GPS for a team of, by the way, that student success team, 800 people worked on that team, including the teaching assistants. And so when anyone went red for any reason, we had a playbook for how to go and support that student in the moment. I think every school, every classroom, every teacher deserves that same level of insight and opportunity to say, this student is the one that needs me right now. Of course, not every classroom has a teaching assistant for every eight students. What we think that teachers can get, what we're building is a way for teachers to give something engaging to students and still find out that same information replicate that one-on-one -on -one conversation that a teacher can have in the five or 10 minutes before class or after class. Do that one-on-one -on -one check in, surface those same insights to the teacher. And it doesn't mean that the teacher gets that one-on-one -on -one connection with every student, but it does mean that the students that are totally fine, that the AI can push them in a new and interesting way. Like it meets them where they are and pushes them in an interesting way. The student that's really struggling with a specific concept, but is too scared to raise their hand in class. I'm stopping class again to ask this obnoxious question. Sorry, everyone. No student would ever say that, but they feel that. That's why they don't ask the question. They get the help that they need. That middle group that like they're struggling, but with a one-off thing that specific day that the teacher can pinpoint that and go and have the conversation. Let's talk about the adoption curve of this type of technology. What have you seen with schools, districts, institutions, public, private sector? What does the adoption curve look like? We think about this in five steps. Two years ago when we started building School AI, Every conversation I had with a teacher, a principal, an administrator, whoever it was, top to bottom was, should we even allow this? The cheating thing, right? 
Yeah, it's all about it's all about cheating, right? If you think, hey, what AI is going to do is it's going to help kids cheat. That was concern number one. Concern number two was, hey, teachers are going to put student data in this, and now it's going to be part of the model, and so we're breaking our like student privacy compliance expectations. Two years ago, we we call this like, permission. Should we even allow this at all? And two years ago. The answer for most people was no. New York City schools banned everything, right? A district that we worked with here right up the road, they banned Canva because Canva introduced an AI feature. Canva basically started in schools and Canva was getting bad because they had an AI feature. Once you get past that, you start realizing like, hey, AI is useful for us. Me as a teacher, it's useful for me. I can I can adapt a lesson plan or shoot, I need to write a sub plan and I only have like my three bullets on a post-it note. That's how I was going to teach today. And now I need to turn that into a sub plan. AI is great at that type of thing as well. So you get, in, you get into productivity. Now the conversation has shifted one stage to the right. 80% of people are thinking about productivity, how AI can work for them. And that bleeding edge, that like 15, 20% of, of people that are thinking what comes next, they're thinking, hey, kids have to know how to use this stuff. They're thinking about AI literacy. Already, they, they know that they're using it so much that by the time these kids get into the workforce, they have to be able to use it. So step one, permission. Step two, productivity. Step three, AI literacy. Stu how, how do students need to learn how to use this? The fourth one that we think about is changing how kids learn the personal tutor, the examples I've already shared about AI personalizing to the student's interests. That is that fourth step. Right now, today, maybe 10% of schools or teachers are thinking about that step. It's not just AI literacy, it's changing how students learn. Those are my favorite conversations to have right now. We've been talking about 21st century skills for 50 years. This is finally like one of those. We didn't know we were going to have to teach kids how to use AI. Well, guess what? It's here. We have to teach kids how to use AI. It's already very difficult for me to hire people that aren't able to use AI productively. AI literacy, it's students knowing how to use this. They're gonna have to know how to use it to get into the best colleges, to get the best jobs, to get the opportunities that they're looking for after they graduate from high school. Now that we've recognized that, we're thinking about how do, how do we give this to students in a safe, managed, secure way that like there's guardrails. It's not just being used for cheating. It's being used as a writing coach. It's being used as a personal tutor, but not just autocomplete of my homework. Right now, probably 50% of teachers, schools, they're starting to think about like, hey, students are going to have to use this. And they're trying to figure that out. The leading 10% that are, that are thinking the most about AI, they're starting to think, how does this change how kids learn? They're starting to think about impact, not just kids will need to know how to use this, but how does this change how kids learn? How does this change how I teach? It's only 10% right now. In six to nine months, it's gonna be 50, 80% of the conversations are gonna be there. That's really exciting. So step five, we get really interested in thinking about school transformation. There are best practices. There are things that work. What we wanna do is help AI make those things happen more often. School leaders and policymakers understand what works and double down on those things. Help identify like what teachers are absolutely changing the world that you're never gonna see on a state test. And how do you magnify what they're doing? That is where we get the most excited is when you can put AI to work in all the nooks and crannies to understand what works, what doesn't work, and really magnify the great work that's happening in schools right now. What advice would you give an educator that's a little leery of allowing students to use AI in the classroom? Look, I think that's a totally fair starting point. The first student that I showed how to use ChatGPT in November when ChatGPT first came out won $20,000 in scholarships by Christmas by putting in a few bullet points about himself <laughs> and the scholarship essay prompt, copy paste, writes the essay, copy paste, sends it in, 20 grand. Whatever you think about that, I think there's there is all valid, right? Is the kid smart? Is is was it was it ingenuity? Was it creativity? Probably. Was it maybe problematic from a, like, he's competing with other kids trying to get those same scholarships? Probably. It's complicated, right? So every feeling that a teacher has about being wary of putting AI in students' hands, super valid. 
If you're worried about kids using AI at school, that's super valid. The thing that we all are starting to recognize is that they're using it anyway. What we need to do is figure out how to use it productively, how to use it to challenge kids, how to use it to further their learning, not just retreat to, is it cheating? What we found is that when teachers are consciously designing for kids using AI, then it actually becomes a superpower. What you can do as a teacher is you can go to school AI and search a library of more than 150,000 ways that teachers have used AI with their students. That might be a quick pulse check at the beginning or the end of class. It might be chatting with a historical figure to learn about the time. One of my favorite is when English teachers go in and say, hey, we're writing an essay about this certain book. I want you to be a writing coach, but I want you to not write the essay for them. And then they hit save and launch, they share it with students, and it is a writing coach, and it will not write the essay for them. That is a thing that right now, it's a superpower for those teachers that aren't able to one-on-one -on -one sit next to those students, be a writing coach for every one of them, but it also isn't going to retreat all the way back to, here, I'll write your essay for you. What we have to think about is, how do we bear hug this? <laughs> Like how do we how do we help students use it productively in a way that allows them to do more, go further, do more interesting things? If you as a teacher are feeling like, hey, my students should not be using AI at all, what I would say is start with yourself. How do you want to use AI? Are you using AI? I think if you aren't using AI yet, there's a couple of things you should try. Go to Claude.com or go to ChatGBT or go to Perplexity and just ask a question. Think about something you have to do tonight. Maybe you're making dinner. Take a picture of what's in your fridge and say, based on what you see in my fridge right now, what can I make for dinner tonight? And it will list out what it sees in that picture and it will give you a recipe for what you can make for dinner tonight. Now that may seem super small, but I want you to start thinking about like that type of interaction compounding over time. When you go and Google something, you've got to come up with the exact right phrase to make sure that the responses aren't just a bunch of spam. Instead, go to a tool like Perplexity and ask your same question there. Don't think that much about how you're phrasing it. You don't have to get the right and or or, just ask the question. And what Perplexity is gonna do is it's gonna say, hey, I'm gonna go do the searches for you. I'm gonna read the pages for you. I'm gonna summarize them in a super easy way for you here. Two super approachable ways for you to realize the impact of AI for you and start unlocking like, how can you start using this with students? What do you feel comfortable with students doing? The third thing that I would recommend then is when you get open to the idea of students using AI for a small thing, you can go to school AI, you can find either a space that another teacher has created, a space is like an AI chatbot led activity, tutor, game, something like that. Go look at the library. There's more than 150,000 of these and just search for what you're teaching and see how other teachers have used AI with students. Or you can go in and create your own space. You can say, we're writing an essay on whatever you're covering this week. I want you to be a writing coach and I want you to not write the essay for the student. Hit save and launch, share the code with your students. It will be a writing coach for your students. It will not write the essay for your students. Like you get to set the guardrails about how AI interacts with your students or doesn't to be productive within your class.